this presentation is all about fish. Ooh. So here's a question you might not have asked yourself before. Okay. What do fish sound like? Uh, um, don't know. <laughs> Rach, why don't, you, why don't you give us a lovely impression of I fish? just, yeah, I tried. I, I did. <laughs> oh, was that your <laughs> impression? That, not that loud, really. That's, <laughs> I, you can only assume. Maybe they sound like... <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> what about this? Male initiates spawning, nineteen twenty-two. So obviously, at the end of that clip, okay, that, that is a man speaking. Pretty sure that wasn't a fish. <laughs> <laughs> It sounded like Echo the Dolphin. That was uh, the mating call of cusk eels. Mm. We have precedence for eels, don't we? Yes, I we guess, do. <laughs> I guess I was just thinking about them living their life in silence. Mm. I guess right. you just kind of assumed. Mm. I mean, water exactly. is better at conducting sound or something. Yeah, or is it sound worse? travels, I think, like four times faster through water than through air. Yeah, so that, that that was wiggling. the mating calls of cusk eels, like the ones in this video. Okay. So, we've done one episode on how parrots can talk. This episode is about how fish talk. It's so nice. <laughs> yeah, they're quite beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't usually think of fish as using sound to communicate. It's not usually what people are investigating when they're looking at fish. Yeah. We can walk around and easily hear birdsong mm -hmm. all around us, but we can't hear the sounds made by fish from above water. And when people are spending time underwater, they're usually using incredibly noisy equipment or they're scaring the oh. fish away. And, you know, it's, it's rare that people actually right. have the opportunity to hear the sounds being made by fish. Mm, okay. But that doesn't mean they're not making them. And um, all the um, sounds that I've put in the presentation were recorded by Rodney Roundtree, who is wow. a very what dedicated a name. fish listener. What a name. Rodney Roundtree. That is such a cool name. Cheers, Rodney. That's the name that you'd come up with if you were, like, creating a fish noise person. <laughs> like if you were writing a novel about a man who listens to fish. So, what do fish use sound for? Uh, just like birds or frogs, we can observe fish vocalising for a whole host of purposes. Oh, it's Nemo. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one, that's Nemo. So, fish, fish use sounds to call for mates, to using courtship displays defensive displays to scare off predators or mm -hmm. competitors and to warn each other of predators and other disturbances. Mm -hmm. How do they make sounds? So soniferous fish use a range of body parts and movements to vocalize and soniferous literally just means it makes sounds. So it's just noisy. Soniferous is the, the posh way of saying noisy. What? Yeah, loud, like, loud fish. What proportion of fish are soniferous? It's basically just a really uh, under-investigated field of study. It's fairly new. Like, you know, there have been some fish that have been recognised as being especially noisy that are known about, but the vast, vast, vast majority of fish have just never been investigated to see if they make sounds or not. So we know of about 1,000 fish species that are known to, oh. like, produce sounds basically um is is what rodney roundtree tells me right. um but uh we have no idea of what proportion of fish make sounds yeah there are, there are more than a thousand types of fish yeah. <laughs> many more <laughs> yeah i'm i'm actually you know looking for a new career so unless somebody viewing wants to offer me a job uh i think i might just have found my in under-researched. Yes. I assume uh -huh. that means there's a massive yeah. budget for it. Yeah, that's always what it means, right? <laughs> if it's Wait, to be handed out. Just, yeah. Well, this, this, Give me this that Rodney Roundtree guy drill. is so sweet. He's just take like, they're just taking their microphones out to 
aquatic environments, dropping them under the water and listening for ages and ages and trying to figure out what each thing is. And like, that just sounds like such a sweet life, doesn't it? Like, It's better than fishing. If you're fishing for sweet recordings rather than fishing for dead animals. Exactly. It's literally, it's, it's everything that you would want to get out of fishing, right? Like you get to interact with the fish, you get to be in the nature, you get to like, you know, interact with your environment and see all these amazing creatures, but you don't have to, you know, like upset them. You're just listening to them and you get to learn about them. You also don't get a tasty fish dish. I that's, think uh, that's true, if, but I don't. Mind. <laughs> if this channel brings in the big money, I know what in- equipment we're investing in. Uh, like <laughs> the hydro- hydrophonic, yeah, uh, microphone. Be so nice. <laughs> Subscribe to our Patreon. Yeah. Our yeah. one hundred dollar <laughs> Patreon reward tier oh is, God. and we will start recording fish. I'm doing it. Under- I'm doing underwater it. episode of next slide, please. Jen, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so. This sound. It it sounds like a cat with a (laughs) hairball. So this is the Crevail Jack, which uh, lives across the Atlantic Ocean. And this is it grinding its teeth together to make noise. Um, take, taking a bit too much MDMA, is he? <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the cricket method of, of sound yeah. production. So this is, this is stridulation, which is rubbing together hard parts of the body, like teeth, fins, or bones. Um, yeah, like, like crickets. Uh, and then we've got the... Uh, glamorous oyster toadfish. Mm. You like that? It sounds like like a saw almost. It's like this like grumbling like horn noise, like a buzzer. Mm. And so this is the oyster toadfish calling for a mate. And it's making this noise by manipulating the swim bladder with its internal muscles. And the swim bladder is this funny little organ, this strange, this number five on this diagram, this strange little translucent organ that is just full of air and uh, it, it regulates the air in there to regulate buoyancy. And lots of fish can produce sounds through sort of drumming on that uh, swim bladder Mm. to make these like big loud noises. It's just really cool. So it's almost like, (laughs) it's almost like it's making noises out of its farts. We'll get to that, Jen. (laughs) (laughs) Almost, but not quite. Oh dear. Uh, (laughs) so uh unknown Unknown. this is an a recording from an unknown fish (laughs) wanted to remain anonymous i hope everyone enjoyed that cheeky fart there (laughs) (laughs) And so this is the recording of a cheeky little fart from an unknown fish, likely a trout or a salmon. Uh, Herring are also known particularly to make high-pitched, repetitive little farts at night time. And this is thought to actually be a way for them to be able to locate each other and stick close together in a large group. I mean, if if someone fishy farted near me, I would not be going anywhere near them. (laughs) I would be avoiding them like the plague. I don't know why I expected it to be much louder and much deeper. Like, I was really expecting yeah. some, like, a tiny fish to properly <laughs> let it rip, you know? <laughs> you know, aquatic habitats are actually, com- like, full to bursting with lively sounds, but what fish are actually making these sounds and why is mostly unknown since so few scientists have studied them. According to Rodney Roundtree, who I was talking about earlier, 
who recorded all the sounds in this presentation, we've been able to identify vocalizations from over 1,000 species of fish, but the vast majority of fish have never been investigated, which is why there's so many of these uh, fish noise clips that are unknown in origin. There's lots of like little, like yeah. this is like a little, no. this one sounds like a chicken. Oh yeah, little clucks. Right? And that little grumble. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's deeply unpleasant noises is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Humanity was not meant to hear the sounds of the sea. <laughs> The sounds of the ocean were not meant to be heard by human ears. <laughs> this is against nature and against God. This is why I'm so uncomfortable. That's why I'm so uncomfortable. It's because it is against my nature to hear these noises. <laughs> it's it's like, definitely a chirpy character to a lot of them, though. It's yeah, Cthulhuian. Nice. It's Cthulhuian. <laughs> Cthulhuian? <laughs> But what I'm, what I'm trying to really impress upon yourselves and the audience is that if we were fish, our That's a big lives if. would be full of different sounds that we'd be using mm. to communicate and navigate and hook up and avoid predators and, and, and the soundscape would be actually really important to us. But it's something that we pretty much never get to think about or experience when it comes to fish and their underwater lives like like you said Jen like they sound travels I will correct this if I'm wrong in the edit but <laughs> sound travels four times uh hmm, I think it's faster but it also travels much 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 further through water than it does through air so this is why you have these kind of like like whale song uh, calls, like traveling for absolutely vast distances, like calling to each other. Uh, just to interrupt a second, um, Jen, can I hear your best impression of a whale, please? Okay. We need to find it. <laughs> but appar like apparently and 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 then the, the next person <laughs> yeah right you can't on. you can't get the two of us to do it and then you don't do anything yourself <laughs> this is this is this is a this is a conjoined humiliation <laughs> if i'm going down you're going down shucks uh i can't think of anything to say other than <laughs> Apparently, like most of the whale sounds that you'll be hearing, my partner's like... laughing at me. See <laughs> <laughs> what you've done. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned when I was researching this that when when you hear whale sounds, it's usually sped up to be audible to humans. Oh. So it's much higher pitch and much faster. Yeah. <laughs> what a fun little fact. Um, other other notable noisy fish. Seahorses can make clicking noises by rubbing parts of their skulls together. <laughs> that. Mm. I reiterate, <laughs> this is against God and against nature. <laughs> this is nature. <laughs> Squeak a catfish can make squeaky noises by rubbing the spines located in their pectoral fins into grooves on their shoulders and they can also vocalize with their swim bladder muscles mm. and the plain fish midshipman which lives in the deep deep ocean and it's covered in like uh photophores little light producing organs um to you know uh do those clever things that deep sea oh, fish do. Oh, phospholuminescence. Yeah. Um, mm. And it has to ascend all the way up to these like tidal 
environments to mate and it will actually spend like massive like many hours like exposed to air like it goes from the depths of the ocean to flapping around on land and that's where it mates and lays eggs and and it while calling for its mate it does this this loud humming on the swim bladder for over an hour to attract mates and it's like they can be so loud or like so loud especially all joined up in chorus or like in competition with each other that it's just like heard by people living nearby they just (laughs) have to deal with this noise (laughs) wow that's cool i mean that's That's no different to noisy nightclubs is it the locals can hear those as well and that's a mating ritual (laughs) yeah true now now that you are aware of the importance of the kind of soundscape to fish in their lives, it's also important to think about the effect that noise pollution has on them. Because discovering more about the importance of sound for communication underwater has meant learning more about how devastating certain kinds of human activity have been for aquatic wildlife, particularly... Um, devastating sounds can even rupture the swim bladders of fish Mm. because it's just this you know air inflated organ Mm -hmm. um and that would kill kill fish it can damage hearing organs it can make it too loud for like obviously too loud for them to be able to communicate Mm -hmm. um and make them like functionally like because they they use sound so much to map out the physical environment that it it would it's like making them blind as well because then they it's can't navigate yeah kind of. yeah and it can pl- it can apply just huge huge stress and and the the picture i've got on the slide this is of um how oil exploration is carried out seismic air guns shoot shock waves Deep into the ocean floor, the echo is recorded and provides information about oil deposits. So that's how they're going out searching for oil deposits without even realizing or considering the impact that those, you know, those oh. sonic shocks mm. have on the wildlife around. Mm-hmm. As I said before, this is like a really uh, under researched field. Um, it's like, in its very kind of early stages of learning about it so yeah hopefully hopefully there's a lot that we can do to improve that situation once we know more hopefully good old rodders will get some more funding yeah exactly good old rodders (laughs) if rodders wants a research assistant yes go go find find rodney on (laughs) twitter.com and at him and be like (laughs) This person I watch on YouTube called Rage, mm. right? They really want a job. Mm. 